Hi. Good to see familiar and new faces. This is great to see everybody on this. Uh, it seems sunny everywhere. People are. This is great. It's a good, uh, good Friday. All right. So um, I'm just going to give a few more minutes to uh, other people to join and then, uh, and then we'll start. Isn't it a holiday in Europe, like Ascension or something like that? In, in France, yes. Uh, yeah, in France it is. Not sure in Italy, actually. I didn't he hmm. um, hear anything, but I definitely it's in France, right, Fanny? It's just... I have no idea. It's Memorial Day. No, I think it is. No, no I'm, idea. I'm sure it is, yes. It's that weekend, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, in the U.S., it's uh, technically tomorrow and uh, Monday free or, you know, I mean, bank holiday. I don't know what it means anymore, but. <laughs> well, I know what it means. It means no school. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. No, because I was going to say now with the online working, there's basically no holiday anymore. Yeah. Everything, you know, changed. But school still, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, some things that uh, AJ said uh, um, uh, that I'm going to say again. AJ, you're on the meeting. But uh, you said uh, something very true. It's, uh, it's like a three-day week. It's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I feel <laughs> this is very, very true. <laughs> but before, a three-day week sounded great. Now it doesn't sound very good anymore. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna um, start very soon. Um, so I'm, as usual, I'm gonna just remind everybody of the little uh, simple guidelines. Uh, I uh, muted everybody and for now you can't unmute yourself. Um, if you wanna ask a question, uh, you have the chat uh, available. Uh, the meeting is recorded. So if you don't wanna share um, uh, your, great uh, self, uh, you can stop the video, um, but you know, it's still a, a social event. So we're very happy when we see uh, faces and we hope you have your drink of choice uh, from its coffee today. Uh, so not very green uh, or blue. Ooh, what is that, Julia? Looks well, it's, I know, right? So it's actually green tea in the glass, but I thought I'll have something blue. That's a great idea. Green. And then, yeah, something yellow. So all the colors. Maybe I should wow. get a chalice of some sort. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I drink yeah. out of. Well, very nice. So hopefully, uh, uh, you guys have uh, have a, a drink as well. And, uh, and I think we we can uh, we can start. I'm gonna give the floor to um, Andrea, our lovely um, our lovely fair director. And, uh, uh, and I think we're going to start with a very short uh, update on, uh, on CADAF Online uh, and then hear it, hear it from Julia and Kevin, our guest for the day. Thank you, Fanny. So I'm going to, so thank you everyone for joining us today. We're very excited to have everyone here and very excited to have Kevin Abosh uh, joining us for this happy hour. Um, I'm gonna, I was very excited to show you how the platform is going and to give you some updates on, um, on how the art fair is coming along. So just to, I'm gonna share my screen with you. So Elizabeth, maybe, okay. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I would like to mention a couple of things. So for those of you that, don't know yet, this event is free for visitors and collectors and all you have to do is RSVP at Kadaf online and then you will get updates about the fair. The fair is gonna happen from June 25th to June 28th and we are very excited to see all the applications and to see everyone that is participating and we can't wait to see the ones that are left because we're closing applications on June 1st. So if you, have, if you haven't done so and want to apply, I encourage you to do it soon and we will be accepting people on a rolling basis. So if we haven't gotten back to you, um, just wait. So, okay, so can you see, I'm, I'm sharing my screen, and so how it will work is that once the fair starts on the 25th of June, 
you will first go into a page before this one that you will just have to put your name. You don't have to put your real name, but if you want to, you can. And then you can access this platform. So as soon as the first starts, this is what you will see. So just to give you a little background on the design of the platform, um, we really like thought that what is important in the physical events and the things that we miss about having physical events and how we could recreate this um, things into a digital in a digital manner and make it like not trying to replicate the physical space but making it digital. So we decided to design a map that is interactive that you can navigate that will give you a full scope of everything that is happening in the fair. So these bubbles that you see here are boots and we have both artist boots that have nine walls and by nine walls we mean space for nine artworks and then we have gallery size boots that have 25 walls for 25 artworks. So once you enter the fair you can see like we have different colors so how it works is just like in any other fair that you have like color coded sections for like the new art for like all the parts. So here you can see we have the Kadaf galleries, Kadaf artists. Then we're very excited to share with you that Mana will be hosting their open studios at Kadaf this year. So we have around 300 booths of Mana open studios that the artists are going to be showing all their artworks. So you can see them here in the orange section. Of course, we will have more bubbles. And so as you navigate the fair, what is really nice is that we really focus on the social part. So in this section, you can see everyone that is at the fair. So right now it's Fanny, AJ and me that are connected, but you can always see how many people are and you can chat with them directly or you can participate in the general chat of the fair. So this way, like you can keep track of things that are happening, things that are about to start and one thing that we didn't want to, one thing that we're really pushing very hard is our programming. So down here you can see you have a screen that is going to be content streaming for 24 hours while the fair is open. So it'll be on all night and all day for all the different time zones and you can expand it and here we will be hosting our panel discussions, artist talks, live performances. Um, we're going to be showcasing videos. We're going to be showing some of um, our artists like how we have had before in the video loop and you can here you can ask all the questions that you need and for to see like the events this is still under development and we don't have the schedule just yet but we will have a description of every talk or panel and you can add it to your calendar so that you don't forget and it'll remind you so just to show you here the boots are we decided to like make them like bubbles. And so the ones that are smaller are the boots that I have already been into. So it gives you a sense of what there is to discover and the places that you have already been. And then you can see these little dots here that right now we're not so many since it's just us connected, but it gives you a sense of how many people are in each booth. And it shows you, it creates a heat map system showing you like where people are going. You can see where people are, but of course we want to be very careful with, with here you can see another dot so that it doesn't crash. So we created caps on the boots. And this way we will like, we just, want to keep it safe and for everyone. So once you want to go on a boot, you have to click on it, or you can, if you, you can also find artists by name here or galleries by name, or if the map is too much for you, you can view it as a list. So I'm gonna show you how a boot looks like. So you just click on it and you hit enter. And so once we're, once we're in a boot, this is what it looks like. This is a nine wall booth. And you can see that here you have the nine walls that are the nine artworks. And the platform supports videos, it supports images, it supports 3D objects. For uh, virtual reality, we're still working on it, but we definitely encourage people to have a video of the making of their virtual art, of their artwork or a video of it. And then you can make a link to your website. So as you can see, when you enter a booth, this is what you get. You, this is your wall and this is your artwork that can be a video. You can see like a video can play. 
and you can just navigate the booth. And so you have the artwork, then here on top, you have the artist information, the artwork name, and then you have three options when you're a visitor. You can inquire about the artwork that will open a one-on-one -on -one chat with you and the owner of the booth. And this way, you, we won't have a transactional element in this edition. So it'll just connect the visitors and the exhibitors. And then if you want to make any sales, um, you're welcome to do so by email, by any option you want. So in a booth, you can uh, show the detail uh, panel uh, with the uh, comments. Sorry? Yeah, here. Maybe you can uh, show like the inquire, share and save. Yes, so maybe first I'll show you here the chat because every booth has their own chat just to so that we understand how the inquiry button works. Uh, every booth has their own chat that is a general chat for the booth. So the owner of the booth can post updates, can post information, people can participate and say, like talk about the art they're seeing. And then in the detail panel, the inquiry button will just open a one-on-one -on -one chat between the exhibitor and the visitor. And then you can also, as a visitor, share the artwork to social media or save it to your collection. So as you navigate the fair, you can be saving artworks that then will go to your email saying like you looked at this artwork and you saved it into your collection. So are you interested in getting in touch with the artist or gallery or do you want to learn more? And it'll give you all the options. So here is what we call our detail panel that you can add as much information as you want. And you can also embed websites, videos, images and anything that supports the artwork. For example, you can also embed your website if you can purchase the artwork directly from the artist's website or if they have any marketplace, you can directly purchase through here since this detail panel is amazing. And if you think your artwork looks better with a dark background, that is also possible. And for physical artworks, we're very excited that once you put in the dimensions, you can see it in context of other things to understand the complete scale of the artwork. So you navigate the boot. You can navigate the boot either by clicking or with your computer arrows. And so all the boot owners will have access to how many people are in their boot viewing all the time. And so, for example, here we have two viewers and you can see exactly where those viewers are in what artwork. So after the fair is over, we will send all the boot owners all the data that we gathered during the fair. So you can see here. And then you can always return to the fair and go back to the programming. And here you can see that this one became smaller. Now we have more people in the platform. And just to give you a quick look, because I really want to pass it on to Kevin to hear about him. Um, this is the back end, how it will work. So once you're an artist or a gallery that gets accepted into the fair, we will share with you this, this page. So you will have full access to the back end of your booth and you will be, it will be customizable to the point that you can add like the name of the artist or the name of the gallery, add a short description about it, choose the thumbnail image, and then you will be attached to the Kadaf section or whatever section you belong to. And then you have all your walls in which you can edit artwork. We have had the question that what happens if I sell one of my artworks and I replace it for another one? And yes, you have full access to your booth all the time. You can replace and change things as you go. It is very easy. You just have to like at the name of the artwork and here you can upload an image, a video, a 3D file, and you can add the dimensions here and all the information. And you can also upload a recording explaining the artwork that you're seeing or anything that is relevant to the artwork to better tell the story because we're really encouraging artists and galleries to tell a story through their booth and even you can give like instructions on how it should be navigated. And here in the detail panel, you can add all the information you need and you can also upload in it pictures, videos, recordings, and you can embed YouTube videos if you want to show how the artwork was made or anything that you think is interesting. We really can't wait to see what you guys come up with or you can embed a Vimeo link or a website. So here you can see it's very simple. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of where we were and I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of the talk uh, about the platform.
So yeah. One thing we thank you, Andrea. We're very excited, uh, uh, you know, about uh, the use that artists uh, make of this uh, flexible interface because, um, like, they tell better the uh, the story of their work and uh, and and trying to go beyond like the text and the 2D uh, artwork. Uh, we're really looking forward to see um, uh, the use of it because it's never what you expect. <laughs> no. Like it's really, it's really flexible in that sense. And I think that you can definitely have a lot of fun with it. So I'm gonna stop sharing here and pass, pass on the, the floor to Julia. So. Thank you. Thanks. And um, hi everyone, uh, Kevin. Uh, oh, can anyone hear me fine? With any sort of funny noise in the background? Yes? Yeah? Good. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Kevin, I think we're, I can speak for everyone saying we're really excited, excited to have you with us today. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a great privilege. Um, and before we get into um, a bit more of a conversation, I wanted to just summarize um, your bio. So um, you're obviously a, a world-renowned uh, conceptual artist, uh, but also a human rights activist, um, which I think is also uh, very interesting and maybe not everyone knows that about you. Um, and your work spans from photography, installation, film, you work with you know, generative technologies like artificial intelligence and blockchain, but also if um, you know, people when they, you know, they will be allowed to travel, they can see your work in some of the, I think, greatest institution, like the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, um, the Museum of Modern Art in Bogota, the National Gallery of Ireland, and also the uh, ZKM Center for Art and Media in Germany, uh, which I would love to also visit because I've, I've, sort of, I've never been. Um, and I was wondering, Kevin, if uh, you would like to share with us maybe a little bit about your work as an artist sort of your development throughout the years and your sort of evolution like when you started from and where you got to today well uh hi everyone first of all uh thanks kata for having me here and julia um you can hear me everybody can hear me yep. yes okay. um so my uh I was surrounded by art as a, as, a, as a child, not because my parents were artists, nor were they collectors, but uh, they had some friends. And I, and, and, uh, uh, I actually grew up in Los Angeles, uh, and, and, and some of my, friend, my father's friends uh, collected art. Uh, so when we would go to their homes, I was surrounded by, um, I was surrounded by art. And, and as a young child does, you, you, uh, you respond uh, sort of reflexively to what you see. And I can remember probably being about five or six uh, and just, uh, well, prompted with a question. I don't, I don't remember who the artist was, but it wouldn't have been Henry Moore, but I, I have a vague recollection of, could have been like Jean-Paul Riopelle or something, but uh, I, it was, you know, what do you think of that? They, so th this, this, uh, this man in his 60s is asking a five or six-year-old, you know, so what do you think of that? And being on the spot, um, I just kind of reflexively was like, well, I don't like it. Um, thinking that was, that was like the, the cool response. And then, but fortunately for me, uh, he said, uh, what don't you like about it? Well, and you know how kids do, I just, I, I, I don't like it. But he wouldn't let me off the hook, which is the biggest gift that anybody could ever have done for me. He said, well, let's, let's talk about this. Like, do you really not like it? Does it make you feel bad inside? And so he, 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 he wouldn't let me off lightly and, um, and I couldn't come up with an intelligent answer as to why I didn't like it because in fact, in fact, it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just didn't know how to engage with it. So he started, you know, giving me a little bit more um, uh, context, I guess, uh, as to uh, how this uh, piece of art came to be. And, um, and then it became more a discussion about, you know, really like how it made me feel and do I see the artist's intent? And, and it was just, a, it was just a very kind of like, you know, it was art appreciation 101, but I had that, uh, I'm simplifying matters, but uh, I had that like intensely for most of my childhood. Um, so, uh, and I was exposed to some pretty, you know, at the time I, mean, I thought like pretty, uh, you know, out there stuff. Um, 
and and I got to know a little bit about the artists behind it. And I also sort of I, I bought in sort of to this romanticized notion of what uh, life as an artist is. And I, I, I kind of liked it. Uh, it seemed like, you know, as a kid, it's like, wow, you just kind of, you know, you, you, you play and you make art and somehow you can support yourself with that too. That, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't say that I wasn't aware of that because, you know, as we have today, it, it's, and, and I go out of my way not to bring in discussion of commerce when it comes into art, but so many of the stories you hear, you know, about Picasso, you know, in a cafe and he couldn't pay for his meal, so he did a little sketch. So like from an early age, the idea of art as this store of value, um, that you, you, you can't escape it. I mean, you still can't escape it today. Um, and, or you would hear stories about people abusing Dali when he was on his deathbed by bringing him in a stack of, uh, you know, uh, blank sheets of paper um, and yeah. saying, you know, sign them all. And then they would go figure out what to print later, whether or not he even had his hand in that, who knows? And I was like, wow, it's a, it was obviously a dark, a dark, episode in his career but again the guy was being com commodified and uh and and somehow there was this weird connection to it um but i think early on i also recognized this sacred relationship between artists the work and the public um but for some reason i had early on uh whether it was an aptitude for things scientific and 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 and, uh, and math um a large portion of my identity was wrapped up in this idea that I would go on to be a scientist. You know, one day I would, you know, study engineering or, you know, something noble like that. Uh, and that was my path, or maybe I'd be a veterinarian. It was always some variation, some science, biology one day, it was engineering the next day, computer science, you know, aeronautics, you know. And then when it was time to go to school, um, I, uh, I, uh, I studied microbiology. It was something that I felt that I, you know, had something, there was, there was a lot there for me to learn. Um, and I found it interesting, but there was a point, and I'm skipping back and forth, but I mean, there was a point after school uh, ended where I realized that um, the answers, uh, or, the, or I should say the questions that I wanted answers to in life, I couldn't answer through science and certainly not math. And that art somehow brought me closer to those truths, which is terribly, terribly exciting and and uh, empowering, um, you know, and 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 uh, I mean, so 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 that 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 explains my transition into the world of art. And I also I didn't think I I wasn't sure what kind of talent I had as an artist. You're always told like you know that person has talent, that person doesn't. Um, you know, again, fortunately for me, I didn't have a bunch of people telling me I was talentless because maybe then I would never have even occurred to me that I could be an artist, you know, and, and it's kind of daunting. <laughs> just, the, just the idea of thinking I'm going to be an artist is like, do you deserve to be, uh, you know, part of that society? Or if you're looking up high, that pantheon of greats, you know, are you, of, are you of, even of, of that material? Um, I mean, you can say this about anything in life, but like if you have people telling you you're not, then eventually you might believe that. And if you have people telling you to do have talent, then maybe it goes the other way. And then they're objectively, what is talent to begin with? Um, but, you know, it takes a, a real leap. It's also a lifestyle, you know, that's a whole other discussion, but deciding you're gonna be an artist, that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real kind of lifestyle choice. I think even more so in the, in the United States where, you know, insurance and, Social medicine are not not givens, um, so uh, yeah. I mean, it 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 was uh, it was something that evolved over time, um, and the first uh, I think the first time I really identified as being an artist was in 1989. So it's just like over 30 years. I mean, I think, and I think that I, I that only occurred to me. Uh, I was speaking in Germany recently, and and then actually ZKM. Uh, the museum was having their 30th anniversary and I was having my 30th anniversary. And I thought that was really interesting. And, and when I say that, it wasn't that I wasn't making art before. We're making art when we're four or five years old or even two years old. But as, as, a, as a, it was the first time that I said, I am an artist. I identify as an artist. I wasn't trying to hide it. I wasn't afraid to say it. Even thinking about it, it's kind of like, you know, kind of 
overwhelming. It's, it's, it's like bungee jumping. And then once you do the jump, it's like no big deal. You're an artist and it's too late. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, first of all, you know, thank you. This is great. I uh, obviously learned things that I also, I didn't know about you, but I think one of the concepts uh, that you said about, you know, validation also as an artist, um, you know, and the growth as an artist, you might feel drawn to the world of art. Um, and, you know, sort of, I'm talking about, you know, contemporary artists or uh, new media artists. And, you know, one of the things I've only, recently started collaborating with this amazing group of Kadaf. And one of the things that I loved about them from the beginning was their, you know, focus on, you know, the support and the development of artists. You know, obviously some already established, but, but others that are just starting out and they, they do need that validation. They, they, do, they need a platform to perhaps feel themselves as if they are effectively you know, an artist, like your breakthrough 30 years ago. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you know, also talking a little bit about, you know, Kadaf and, um, and the fair and the digital art world. Uh, what do you think is missing um, today for, you know, further development of, for instance, new media art, for example? Uh, and, you know, what do you think, perhaps since you've experienced Kadaf, because you, you showed at Kadaf before, you know, what do you think Kadaf is doing right in this respect? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I uh, when, when I first became aware of their team and, and what they were putting together, I thought it was very exciting. Because on the one hand, I've been leveraging technology, uh, uh, you know, to make art for a long time. Um, and I mean, in fact, even photography is technology. Uh, and then, you know, then uh, some of the early computer vision stuff I was I was working on and, and some of the generative work. Uh, I, it's funny because I never really thought of it uh, at the time. I, I don't think now I always talk about, oh, the intersection of tech and art. I don't think I ever said those words, intersection. In fact, I didn't talk about intersections, right? Um, right. That, mm -hmm. And, and and that said, uh, I mean, then again, intersectionality uh, in the in in in, in, a, in an academic uh, uh, environment, that's not something that's new to like MIT. You know, MIT in the '60s was you know you'd walk in and have a physics lecture, and then you'd go and have a lecture with Rauschenberg. Um, I mean, they understood the value in in this kind of cross pollination, um, and so it's funny that like so I just I was not. I never thought of the work. First of all, I, I move around. I, 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 I work, uh, you know, across different media. So uh, I never identified as a tech artist for sure. And, uh, um, and while I was aware of uh, an entire body of work being made by artists around the world for many, many decades, um, that was perhaps a little bit more heavily invested in the tech side of things than, um, than, than most of the work we've come to see at galleries and museums. Um, I, 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 I did think, you know, why is that siloed in a way? Why is that work being siloed? And there are different reasons for that. There, there's, um, if you look at a lot of the artists who leverage technology, um, a lot of them were coming from the world of technology. They were scientists and technologists who were expressing themselves artistically, sometimes just in the practical application or experimentation of the technology, they, it would manifest as art. And then other times it was, you know, their artistic side, you know, leveraging the tools uh, at, at their disposal. Um, a lot of those artists, some were prolific, some were not. Um, some of that technology was difficult to understand. Uh, and therefore, the, so the, the people in the sort of uh, in the establishment art world could didn't know where to plug in, how to plug in uh, to that work. But then there were times where you would see established, you know, you know, blue chip artists who would collaborate with a friend who did have a foot in that realm. And that's why you do see sometimes uh, I would just talk about Rauschenberg. But I mean, like uh, there are a lot of artists who, uh, you know, dabbled with, in using tech as a method to make art. But the art, it's, 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 it's not so much uh, that they're highlighting the tech. Um, so it's, it's interesting when, when, when Kadaf comes and says, you know, we're, gonna, we're going to do uh, 
a show that uh, we're going to do a fair around those artists who leverage technology and uh, for very for a multitude of reasons. Sometimes it's about the technology. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the technology. The technology is just a tool. And then you have this issue about uh, presentation, works that don't that 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 are not presented in a traditional sense. They don't hang on a wall. They don't. You can't touch them or feel them. So now we're talking about works that either need to be projected in some way, displayed in you know another way, interacted with. Uh, either in situ or remotely. Uh, some are dependent upon data in the field being gathered a thousand miles away, you know. And so, so all this, this entire realm of work, it, it, it was sort of lost, floating in space, sort of uh, detached from the traditional art world. Yeah. There's a discussion around why that has been, why it continues to be today, and will it persist? Um, but certainly, it was really exciting and, you know, Kadaf being in New York, uh, you know, there's a scene of New York and it, it, it sort of emerged, you know, uh, at the same time that, that crypto and blockchain were exploding. Um, and so I think in the very beginning, there was a lot of that. Um, and New York is sort of a, 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 you know, kind of ground zero, one of the ground zeros anyway for crypto and blockchain um, and its manifestations as art. And of course, it was also at the same time that I was doing my, you know, uh, kind of better known blockchain uh, works um, in, two, in early 2018. Um, so you see this proliferation of activity and a lot of it is a function of, of, the, of the crypto zeitgeist, you know? And then you have corporations obviously who are interested in uh, being perceived as forward thinking. They wanna get involved with this too, right? They wanna help underwrite some of this stuff because uh, makes them seem cool and forward thinking. So, um, and so CADAF seemed to, you know, uh, fill a space that you didn't have outside of, you know, fixed institutions. And I think that's, that's very exciting. And so, you know, I've, yeah, I think I've, I've been involved in some way in, in most of the events, um, you know, in Switzerland and, and in Miami and New York and wow, uh, did we do something in Russia? I don't know, we were just hanging out in Russia. But um, the, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very exciting. And, 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 uh, you know, not only is the fair growing, but the space is growing. And, and I, and if, and anybody who's looking at this space, I'm sure has noticed also, there are like nodes of activity. There's like the ones I, there's the New York node, there's the London node, there's a French node, there's an Eastern block, I hate to call it Eastern block, but it's got to be Eastern European node. There's a South American node, like, and I think they, they were definitely, uh, use the word siloed again, but they were sort of siloed. There was not a lot of interaction between these nodes, strangely. And, and, uh, and, and even to some extent, I would say they were kind of cliquish. And you look, anybody, any art historian will tell you that artists are a bun can, can, can become a bunch of snooty, uh, uh, you know, uh, gossipy, uh, mm. jealous, yeah. A lot of negative adjective uh, types, and uh, and 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 then they look across the pond and they're like, "Hmm, look at that. That's kind of what I'm doing." Well, you know, and they don't want to really have anything to do with it. I think what's nice about CADAF is uh, they're bringing together these nodes, because only good things can come out of the, bringing the nodes together. Yes. It's sometimes that that might well no, it's not counterintuitive. It, that's exactly it's exactly what should happen for everybody's sake. Yes, exactly. I was going to say that. And, and also, uh, obviously, Karaf will continue to be a physical fair um, as soon as, you know, possible. But um, somehow I think it's about, you know, what you just said about bringing sort of worlds together, the various different nods in New York and in London and France. And now being it online, it has opened it up even more. At least from what I've you know seen so far with working with them, yeah. so yeah. in in this uh, challenging times that we're all living in, effectively uh, for the purpose of Kadaf and what you know Kadaf is trying to achieve, um, I think you know it's it's a good thing, and you've obviously seen the the presentation as well. Um, yeah. I think that the platform is fantastic, and um, and it's. It 
it's, it's made to be used by you know the international audience sorry i've interrupted you well no you know and and the really i mean the fairs exist for different reasons you know there's there's the there's there uh, it's it's you know just galleries to sell art artists to sell art uh, uh collectors to discover art other artists to discover art and for me that's a great value too is i think the context that a fair uh like kind uh, provides um you know i think it's important uh, uh, you you can't really exist as an artist in a in an absolute bubble. Uh, that that's I mean I think that's it, it would be an ignorant stance to insist that you should, because you not only need to have a sense of where you as an artist fit in in the continuum of the tradition of making art going back hundreds of years, um, but I think it's important essential to understand um, where you fit in. Uh, in the uh, amongst your peers, or just amongst those creating art uh, at the same time that you are, for 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 simple reasons, you know. Well, one, I mean, you know, you don't want to be <laughs> don't want to be doing accidentally doing the same thing that that guy's doing or that woman's doing, you know. You don't want to, you know, that 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 yeah. for obvious <laughs> reasons, you know. Um, and and then you know uh, you do you get influenced you're influenced by things. It, it, there's something to be said about artists helping each other level up. Um, you know, pushing artists to to dig deeper. Uh, I, I th ideally, you know, I have these discussions with a lot of young artists, and and the conversations are usually about trying to bolt on some cool thing or some gimmicky thing that you know get some attention, separates them from the pack. And you know, and that, that, for, that I'm sure that on some level that works, but what really works is when you're pushed to be more honest, to be more vigorously uh, and, and uh, uh, honest uh, with yourself. That's when you really level up. So I think, and, and, and that, that, that isn't necessarily being verbally challenged by your peers. That can happen, I think, just by taking a look around at the landscape. And and when something moves you and you and, and it moves you in a way that maybe your own work doesn't move you, well, you take a look at why that is and, and try again. Um, yes, it, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't agree more with everything you've said um, and the you know, sense of um, community, you know, amongst artists, you know, obviously what Karap is trying to achieve also, that sense of inspiration, looking at where the market is going, where other artists are doing. I think it's, uh, it's fundamental. And um, I was wondering also if you wanted to tell us a little bit about your work that you've exhibited at Karaf in New York um, or Miami, or perhaps in other projects that you're currently working on. Um, yeah. So I would be particularly interested in and hearing a little bit more about the work at Miami, but that's just, Oh yeah. I, I yeah. really loved it. So thanks. So that was, I was really excited to do that. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not going, I'm not going to art fairs to sell art. Uh, I, I, I am, uh, I'm honored uh, to be in, you know, when I'm invited and, and the first thing I think is where am I going? Uh, who are these people? What are the sociologic dilemmas, uh, uh, that that matter to them, and does any of my work uh, put, uh, address it? Uh, can it address it? Can it respond in a way that um, helps in some way? Uh, and so, yeah. So, so that work was, you know, that was uh, for me. That was really intense. Uh, I, I'll, I, I'll show it. Uh, that's one of the few things I can show here. Um, share screen. Yeah. You cannot share screen while the other, oh yeah, when you, okay. Share screen. Um, just to give you a visual here. Uh, do you guys see that image? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, the, uh, so that's a body bag. Right. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a real body bag. That's not one of the cheap ones when you have mass uh, casualties. That's uh, but that's, that's one that uh, anyway, it's a real body bag. Um, and there is a real issue in America and particularly in Florida of uh, people of color being, uh, being shot by cops. And that's a long discussion about why that happens. Oh, I think there's a little, Maybe I just 
read my own thing. Uh, classification and discrimination are methods used in the development of artificially intelligent systems with black men and boys in America 2.5 times more likely to die during an encounter with police than white men and boys. The fact that society's implicit biases already exist in computer code cannot be ignored. So, uh, so we have this existing issue. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. I, I actually can't, I find it difficult to look at that thing. It's, 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 uh, and when it was in my house and I was, uh, it actually was in this room when I was preparing it, uh, it was, it was really disturbing. I didn't want my kids to, well, they, they, they did come in and see it. They actually wanted to go inside it. But, um, anyway, so, uh, you know, you have law enforcement systems now that are being developed using algorithms, which are biased because algorithms are biased because they're created by, uh, by people. Um, and uh, you know it, it's it's been it's been uh, proven that these uh, these systems like when when they when they're built around uh, bail bail systems um, it's you know strangely uh, the white uh, people get off on bail and the black people uh, they don't get bail. I mean these are realities. So, so I thought this was something that uh, I wanted to address locally there. We're talking about code and technology and it's all fun and it's exciting and it's sexy and it's the future. And there's a side of it, which, you know, it's, it's not like I'm the first person to talk about this. It's, it's discussed implicit bias in code. Um, but I thought that was a really, uh, when I find it, when I, when there's a piece of work that I find difficult to, uh, uh, to experience, then I, I feel like I'm onto something. Yeah, it's not something I really want in my living room. It's not something I'd, uh, you know, hang on the wall. Um, but it's something that uh, I think very quickly a discussion emerges. You either get it or you don't. And if you don't, you ask the person next to you, do you get it? Oh, yeah, it's about this. And then there's a discussion. Blah, blah. Um, and, and, and for me, that's, I say that that's my metric for success is how quickly can people move from the work to a discussion for me, you know? It's nice if they sit there and stare at it for a while, but I'm really interested to see how quickly it turns into a meaningful discussion. Then I know that work is a, a success. But so yeah, so so at CADAP, what I like to do is I like I like to think about like where are we, you know, um, or or even where are we, uh, you know, in in a in any given state. I showed another piece of work at at the at the CADAP in New York. Um, that uh, you know uh, leverage gen generative adversarial networks and. It's a bit lengthy to get into it now, but there was a take on it, and uh, it was my response to, um, at the time, what I perceived were a lot of artists uh, taking a sort of uh, turnkey um, technology and, uh, you know, essentially applying a sort of a filter and saying, "Hey, look at me! I'm an AI artist," and so I did something. Uh, using the same technology. Oh, I'll tell you what it is. Right, maybe I bring it over here. Uh, yeah, I have it. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. Yep. So let's see if we can see this. That is a. Does anybody see what that is? It's. It looks. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Does it look like a photograph of a bent nail? Anybody? Julia? Does it look like a photograph of a bent nail? Yes, it does. Uh, okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, it should. I mean, it really does. It's, 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 it's essentially, it's a black and white photographic image of a bent nail that never existed. Uh, and yet when I look at it, it's clearly a work that I did. It's, it's uh, because I trained uh, a generative adversarial network on hundreds of my photographs of bent nails. And there, and, and, um, and people who work in this technology might say, but wow, how did you get it to look so, I mean, like something's wrong here. It, it really, I mean, that's, you know, uh, from a technical perspective, it's really spot on. Uh, you, you, you must have done something, um, maybe cheated even, to, uh, to get such an accurate reproduction um, of, of, of well, or, 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 or iteration of, of what, what the other hundreds of nails sort of look like. And yeah, and so I, what I was doing is I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying, uh, people around me have heard me say this a lot, you know, I'm not trying to win a Nobel Prize. Uh, I'm optimizing for, uh, for, for, for making art. I'm not trying to impress with my technology. So 
sometimes I, I cripple these things. Sometimes I subvert the technology. Sometimes I, uh, you know, are they mathematically sound? Somebody came up to me and said, um, cause I, I only did nine of these. I did nine iterations of the nail and they all look different and they all look different from the originals, but only slightly different. And somebody said, yeah, but I bet after, if you did a thousand iterations, um, you'd have a collision. In other words, you'd have, uh, it would just basically be a copy. You might as well just like copy a photograph. And that's exactly the, what I was hoping people would ask. Uh, I don't want to do a thousand iterations. I wanted to do nine. And my nine are as pure as can be. Um, and again, I'm not trying to impress with technology. So, so, so and, and that, that just at that time, I don't even think Elena and the team knew that that's, that's what that was about. But for me, that's very much what, what that was about. Um, was, uh, yeah, and I was actually flexing a little technical muscle, but I'm not here to boast about that. <laughs> but, but I just, uh, and it did, I, I had, I had the, the a handful of people that I suspected would, uh, would uh, take a second glance at it and even challenge me and challenge my, my knowledge of uh, the technology behind it, which good luck, you know, I've been doing computer vision and neural nets since 19, uh, 1990. So it's not like I don't know what I'm, I'm doing. I'm just optimizing for, for something different. Um, so that was another example. And then another thing, let me think another cat F thing. I didn't show anything in Switzerland, but, but so, yeah, um, I really liked the Miami edition. I thought it was fantastic. The energy was amazing. Um, I, I will miss that, you know, in-person thing until the next, the next in-person event, but I'm super excited about this virtual event. Um, Kevin, actually, we have a question uh, about uh, another, you know, hard uh, topic uh, being like the current pandemic and, uh, and how you've seen um, that, um, you know, situation affect the world, uh, uh, the work of artists uh, you follow or your, actually your own work as well. Like. So, yeah. Um, so I have, a, 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 <laughs> it's become a pretty robust uh, kind of corpus of work around, around um, our country's dismal response to the, the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, I, uh, I have some photography around uh, the, around objects that have, uh, you know, huge emotional uh, value, I think, um, uh, imbued in them. Uh, so I, I think a lot of artists have, inspired is, is, is kind of a cliche, but I mean, I think, um, I think the situation has pushed a lot of artists to, to make work. It may not necessarily be COVID related, but I think, uh, look, limitations, we know, push artists into great places. You, 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 I, I think, isn't that a rule? Isn't that like a, I think that's a rule. I think, you know, if you, if you, if you, uh, uh, limit, uh, when you limit an artist, they're pushed to do, you know, especially interesting, great things. That's actually one of my own, uh, you know, tools is, is set some, set some limits uh, in order to uh, get things really cooking. So, I mean, it's been difficult. I know that I, I, I talk to a lot of artists, you know, the, the big one is how am I going to support myself? How am I going to feed myself? That's not just artists. Everybody has that problem. Um, I think I, I hear different things, but I think for the most part, there's not a lot of art being sold. I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure some people are selling art, um, you know, and if, and if making art, another long discussion, but if making art is your primary means of supporting yourself, well then, yeah, that's, that's a, times like this can be very, very, very tough. Um, that's it, that's all I have to say about, about that, I mean, we're all facing our own challenges. Some some challenges in common, some others. My my wife happens to be a um, a uh, a doctor uh, on the front lines, emergency room, and you know, so we we live very close uh, to this. Uh, I'm working on a project, a film that's just about finished, and I have I have people in the film who worked on the uh, for the National Security Council on the pandemic response team that was fired by Trump in uh, in uh, 2018. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, we're all, we're all drowning in information and, uh, but yeah, for, for, for my family is uh, no different. You know, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, it's crazy, crazy, crazy times. I mean, I'm kind of an optimist, realist, but 
uh, again, things that imprinted me, <laughs> imprinted on me from a young age. I had a father who was like, when life deals you a lemon, you make lemonade. And I think from this, I was like, okay, this is going to be bad. And I, I think it's going to get worse, but how can we make a good situation out of it? That's what's so exciting about something like Kata. Kata could just be like, hey, we're out of business. <laughs> or they can be like, uh, no, we're going to level up. So that's the coolest thing. I'm excited to see not just how a, uh, you know, a temporary platform uh, is, 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 is put up to, uh, you know, mitigate the damage done, but I want to see how in some ways uh, this fair is better than the rest. I want to, I'm sure, I'm sure, I am positive. Some we probably could figure out, but there will be things that surface where we're just like, wow, that is interesting. I had, I, I, I derived more value from this experience than the fair I went to in person for some reason, for some unforeseen reason. Maybe it has to do with you were able to chat with somebody you didn't know you were going to be able to chat with and they said something that changed your life forever. Or you were able to maybe even just look in at art at home on your own, on your, at your own, in your own timetable, in your own space. Maybe looking at art, knowing that other people are not looking at you looking at the art. I don't know. I don't know the effect of that. Um, but I suspect there'll be some great truth revealed and then they'll inform the next virtual fair as well. Thank you. No, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> so it's part of the experiment, yes, to see, you know, how, what, what the response is from artists, but also from, from participants. I think um, you obviously uh, work with uh, Ai Weiwei, and um, I wrote down something that sort of he said um, about uh, utilizing blockchain or entering the blockchain is that um, this doesn't, uh, that the aim was not to try and create a new system or sort of a new approach, but was to try and move away from the sort of established one and fundamentally create a sort of disruption of the established rather than a new system within, you know, the same old system. And, you know, and in some way, in challenging times like these, perhaps bring, you know, a disruption, uh, but a positive one rather than a negative one. And hopefully, you know, this is what, you know, Karaf will, will be sort of a positive disruption, a new way of looking at art and interacting with art and artists and galleries. Um, and, you know, people feeling in a slightly different um, environment, sort of immerse themselves in a different environment that doesn't have to be, doesn't have to give you the same feelings as a physical environment, but perhaps new feelings and new, and a new approach. So that's, uh, that's the way I feel. And it's in some ways linked to, you know, the last part of your answer about approaching this in a new way. Mm -hmm. I'm interrupting again. There was a there was a, an additional question um, uh, more toward the future, and I think this is also the way you think, Kevin, um, and 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 thinking how um, you know the fact that we have constraints now. Like, is it just a blip or like a glitch, and everybody is going to go back to normal, or do you think this will be a transformational time for artists uh, to work with? more uh, like oh, different media. I do, I do. I think it's going to be a, trans a transformational for all of us. I mean, I don't, you know, com there are so many companies already that have realized that, you know, working from home is a real option. You know, a friend of mine, Matt Mullenweg, who founded WordPress, he was one of the earliest people, I think, who I think 85% of his company was always remote. He was a huge advocate for this for the last decade. Um, and, and I used to always think, I, I'd, I'd say to other friends with companies, usually with tech companies, you know, but, you know, 400 employees plus, and I'd say, well, you know, do you really need all them in a big expensive office? Can't you just have them from home? And, and the traditional thing is like, well, you don't want to keep an eye on them. And how do we know if they're, oh, the host has spotlighted your video for everyone. Okay. Uh, the, um, the, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just kind of, suddenly it was just me. Um, the, I would say, you know, so, so the employers usually would say, well, we, you know, how do we know if they're working when we can't see them? 
And there's some truth to that, but you know, depending on what type of job it is, as we know now, you know, you, you set, you set goals and they either meet their goals or they don't, if they don't, it's not working. If they do, you just keep on going. So, um, and there are a lot of positives to working remotely. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm realistically hopeful that after a, a long rough patch, I do, I do think it'll be a long rough, rough patch, uh, long, uh, but there will be changes to the way we live that will be long lasting and, and, and there will be changes. Um, you know, aside from commerce being affected and aside from maybe being as social as we'd like to be, I'm hearing from a lot of people, um, that it sounds like Trump. I hear from a lot of people, but I do, I really do hear from my friends, uh, that, you know, they're really enjoying, you know, their little brief walk to the park and, taking it slowly and walking slowly. I know some people are fed up having their kids at home. In our case, uh, I tell you what, the kids are not going back to school. Homeschooling has been so, um, uh, so uh, illuminating. Uh, I mean, they're just, they're just, they're learning so much at a different pace. They seem happier. Uh, I know that's not practical. I mean, the reality is for most people, uh, school is daycare and it serves that purpose primarily. But um, yeah, so I think I think education is being disrupted. I think workplace is being disrupted. Art, art's a funny one, anyway, isn't it? Why do people buy art? Do they buy art when times are good? Do they buy art when times are bad? I hear that you know, supposedly, even in the worst of times, people are buying art. So I don't know. I don't know. But I think yeah. I so I think the future. <laughs> I think I think. The future is both bleak and bright at the same time. Yes, I think we could do a whole other um, happy hour on why do people buy art. I think <laughs> it's, one of my it's one of my favorite subjects, actually. It's really one of my value. Perfect. Why people why people put value on anything yeah. and part with their money? Yeah, that's really one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, well, let's do yeah. it at uh, at Cut Online then. Julia is in yeah. charge of the cultural programming, so you're in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna add it in right away. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's very good. Um, so I, funny, do we have a couple of minutes to maybe open up to a few more questions, if there are any? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, this is um, I related uh, questions um, that uh, that we had, um, and because uh, I think we reached out the hour, so it's it goes yeah. very fast when we're positive and thinking about you know <laughs> positive things. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yeah, I think I addressed everything. Uh, Great. And, oh, I haven't uh, even looked here at the chats, the questions. No, that's my role, Kevin. No, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Fun is on it. Fun, she's, she's on it. Okay. I'm the bouncer and the question asker. <laughs> this is my new title. Um, and home teacher as well. <laughs> Which has been fun as well. All right. Well, I think, uh, I think that you can wrap up, Julia. I think if, uh, or if Kevin, you have a... Well, I have a question. Word Fanny, I, I purchased, I talking about commerce, I purchased a, a drawing by your daughter and I still haven't received it. Uh, maybe I. <laughs> right, it's still in her bedroom. It's still in her bedroom. Okay. Or maybe it's in her new uh, gallery, uh, you know, it's all popping up on the walls everywhere. So, Lise, say bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we'll, uh, we'll follow up on that, see, like, you know, she's. Uh, she is, she's a tough uh, businesswoman, so tough gallerist. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay. thank you, Kevin. This has been a great, a real privilege. Thank you uh, very much. And thank you, everyone, for joining our happy virtual hour. We'll see you at you know the next one and at Cut Off Online in June. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Julia, right. uh, very much. And uh, um, normally we do it on Friday, so it feels like Friday. So it's uh, yes, you're right. You but it's only it's Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, no, thanks again for attending. And uh, and um, uh, yeah, um, I will see you uh, next week. Happy Memorial Day weekend, or 
whatever oh, yeah. is happening in France. My Memorial Day is that you have no school here. What? Yay! Sorry. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to end the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.